Hi there everyone, welcome back to your weekly video. This one is for Saturday, May 29th, 2021. So it's Memorial Day weekend already, time sure does fly. A lot of people will be out planting, uh, having picnics, but of course we cannot remember the reason for the holiday. We would like to thank uh, all of our military, their families, and those that have unfortunately lost their lives for our country. So I'm filming this video on Friday, a rainy, rainy Friday, but yesterday on Thursday, I got the opportunity to go over to Cyberling Farms in Norton. You know, they're well, well known for the sweet corn that we sell here in the market and they sell at their stand. But I was able to interview Kurt, who actually brought over two different hives of Russian honeybees. He is a wealth of knowledge and I can't wait to get this video up for you, so please stay tuned. And on the subject of pollinators, but switching to butterflies, I do have an update on our Harry Balls annual milkweed. I will take you back there here later in the video. Uh, we sowed the seeds a couple weeks ago, so they're starting to look pretty good. This particular milkweed was in my video last week of my favorite top 10 annuals. If you didn't get a chance to watch that, I will link that below. I wanted to give you a little update on our plant selection. A lot of you have been calling or emailing saying, hey, do you still have things in stock? Well, I'll start with the annual house. Things are starting to dwindle down. Memorial Day weekend usually is about the time where we stop bringing in new products. But we did bring up a whole new load of hanging baskets. We have our large eight inch annuals that make instant impact in the landscape. We also received a shipment of very fragrant new gardenias and some lantana patio trees that came in about two months late but hey they're here and they are very very nice we still have a great selection of perennials we still have some back stock uh, that we still need to bring up but some plants are diminishing one of those plant groups is catmint uh, we're having trouble keeping that on the shelf but there's some beautiful bloomers the baptisia is starting to bloom the siberian iris has started to bloom and the other day i got a gorgeous picture of the bartsella ito peony and our tree selection is pretty good. We do have another stock coming, usually July 1st, July 15th, of potted trees that we are currently growing, so stay tuned for that. A lot of the Japanese maples, unfortunately, are gone, but we did get a brand new, I think just two or three of them, a weeping golden red bud, and it is beautiful. And plus, another two truckloads are due in of new arborvitas and cedars. I believe they're supposed to ship starting early next week, but I'm not sure how the uh, holiday weekend will affect that timing. Okay, so let's head out to the nursery. I wanna show you a few things. Hopefully I stay dry. Okay, so heading out into the rainy, rainy sales yard, I wanted to show you these awesome butterfly bush we got in. These are in larger pots, and I will show you some smaller pots in the greenhouse. That's, lo and behold, blue chip. Lo and behold, ice chip. Miss Ruby as well. The Miss series become very, very popular. It's more of a taller growing uh, butterfly bush compared to these smaller chip series. These are all the proven winner types. Then in the greenhouse here on table seven, we have blue chip again in the smaller pot, lilac chip, and the new Pugster series. This is probably my new favorite kind of butterfly bush because of those ultra large blooms. And on the other side, we have a very, 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 very popular Miss Molly. We have one of these in our pollinator garden doing great. And the old fashioned Black Knight. And staying here in the Taj, I wanted to let you know that the Crocosmia, a variety called Lucifer, is on sale starting see, yesterday. This has sword like leaves with those beautiful reddish flowers that attract hummingbirds like crazy if you like to attract hummingbirds this is definitely a must for your perennial garden heading into the annual house don't forget about our awesome flower wall here that max built but we did get in some really really pretty lantana trees these are a really good size uh, this one is like a pink and yellow combo and we have just yellow right there in stock and more of an orangey yellow mix back there. We are still doing good with veggie plants. Herbs on the other side of that table. So here we have peppers, giant peppers, little peppers, hot peppers, eggplant. Uh, we have the Mighty Mayo grafted tomatoes. If you've never grown one of those, I would definitely suggest it. They bear fruit like crazy. And we have these awesome patio pots Already ready to go uh, with a cage and all. Those are Roma. 
and just your regular slicer early girl and also celebrity it's $12.99 that includes the cage there we still have plenty of flower flats and plenty of different kinds and varieties our full flower flats and vegetable flats are just $16.99 for those of you that like to grow your own fruit orchard we have our strawberries are now available uh, about two or so dollars per pot a lot of these already are full of flowers and quite a lot of them already ready to bear fruit heading outside the roses are definitely in their prime there's some drift roses uh, that little new petite knockout other knockouts and of course the famous at last rose with those sea anemone flowers and yes they are fragrant too the hydrangeas are also looking fabulous uh, right here that's the new let's dance can do that's the endless summer summer crush and then just your average endless summers over there on my way down to see those hairy balls milkweeds i want to show you we did get more uh lilac trees this one's the dwarf lilac tree and they are 109 dollars a piece oh look what else i found just came in on a truck bobo hydrangea one of the most popular hydrangeas in the last couple of years we ran out very very quickly this spring we have another crop coming late summer fall but we had to bring uh, some in Okay, so now I'm heading in there to check out those Harry Balls milkweed. Okay, here they are. They are just little tiny seedlings right now. We will repot these probably in a four inch pot. I would say later next week or so. So maybe a couple more weeks, we will finally have these available. We did have to sow these seeds a little later than usual, uh, just because we had no space. We grew a lot more annuals and geraniums and all that this year than usual. So these will be a little bit late. But if you've grown these before, you know it takes a lot of heat for them to get going. And once they get put into your pots at home, they will grow, grow, grow. If you're not familiar with the Harry Balls annual milkweed, it is also known as Gumphocarpus physocarpus. The monarch butterfly caterpillars just love it. They will munch a whole plant down in a matter of a couple of days if you have that many. Uh, but that's why we grow it, uh, to help the population of the monarch butterfly. So you get uh, pretty much all summer long, it'll have little white flowers blooming. And then once those flowers mature, they will turn into a green seed pod that is very, very showy. I believe this year, Carl said he sowed more than 3000 seeds. Uh, in the years past, we might've had four or 500 plants available for our customers. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they look great. We will have a lot more available. I think these here for the owl barn roof can't wait to see those installed. On my way back to the owl barn to finish this week's video, I wanted to show you how beautiful the gazebo garden is in the rain. Uh, over there is a Chinese dogwood blooming. That's a red bud that already bloomed. If we head up onto the gazebo, a little pond back here. Looks like the yellow Louisiana iris are blooming in abundance. To finish off today, I wanted to go over that list of late May and early June gardening to-dos on our online calendar. Uh, it looks like one thing that's about time to do is the weed and feed for your lawn. Now this you need to apply as directed. It is best to apply this product when the lawn is wet, either from rain or morning dew, and then let it sit for one to two days. This actually helps the weed part of it, or the weed killer part of it, actually adhere to those weeds and kill them a little faster. Now the next couple of days it lists something about watching for the sawfly on Mugo Pine. And surely enough, the other day on one of those local Facebook gardening groups, they showed a picture of a whole bunch of bugs over their little pine. And I said, surely that has to be the sawfly. So if you have any of those small pines, be sure to head out and look for those bugs. Luckily, they are very easy to control and just about any insecticide will do. Now, rose slugs could soon become a problem, so you'll need to start your spray schedule of rose shield uh, to prevent any damage. If you don't have rose shield and you actually see damage from the rose slugs, you can apply just about any other insecticide, including eight. Plus, azalea lace bugs should also be controlled around the first week of June after the blooms have faded with that same rose shield, or you could also use bonide systemic insect control. Okay, so that's it for today. I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for that beekeeping video from Cyberlink Farm. I hope to have that out soon. Okay, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.